Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about upper back or yoke training. Uh, something that gets thrown around here a lot. Guys talk about that on YouTube, a yoke, without fully always understanding what it is that they are looking for. Because a lot of times guys are saying that and they're thinking of just the traps. And yes, the traps are an enormous part of your upper back. They're a very critical part of your upper back, and the traps include three different parts, arguably some physiologists say four, by the way, three different parts of the trap. You have your upper, upper, middle, and lower. But then you have to think of all the other musculature of the upper back and why it's important to develop that. Okay? You guys have to go way beyond appearance. And am I saying it doesn't affect appearance? Of course it does. When you see a guy with a big upper back, you know in your mind, if you lift it all, you look at that guy and you're like, that's a strong dude. And it doesn't matter what they compete in. It doesn't matter if they're a lean guy with abs and, and good biceps. It doesn't matter if they're a heavier guy who's clearly a strength athlete or a power lifter or whatever else it is that they do. You can look at that guy and say, hey, that's a strong guy. Right? When you see a guy with a big upper back you know that that guy doesn't deadlift only 450. Okay? You know that. You know that guy doesn't have only a 185 overhead press. Those shells are all okay. Those are good strength standards to aim for. But you see that guy and you know, no, 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 that dude with the big traps and the rear delts. And when I say traps, I see traps that run down the whole back. Especially with the rear delts and a, and a good shoulder girdle to go with it. You know he's strong. Every single time. There is no doubt in your mind. And you know it. Therefore, it's a look a lot of guys desire because they realize, no, no, no. It's not just going to be about looking pretty. I'm going to look strong. And I'm going to be strong. And that's one of the things that you see also is that it is a strength deficiency if you don't have a big upper back. And you see... A lot of guys out there who have lats. I mean, I get this with clients who come to me. You see a guy with big lats and no upper back, decent biceps. You know that guy's done lots of chin ups and pull ups. Now, is there anything wrong with chin ups and pull ups? No, they're good exercises. I happen to like them. I think they bring a lot to the table. Right? Good, good exercise, guys. That means a big movement works a very large percentage of the upper body moves, you, moves your body through space. And probably nothing builds your lats better. I mean, pull-ups realistically are the king for lats. And I'm not saying you can't build maximum lats without them, because you can. It's just a little easier if you do them. You can get there a little quicker. So, so yeah, they're about as good as it gets. Probably the best lat exercise in existence. But you see that guy and you know he's probably good at pull-ups. But when he has no upper back, you also know he's weak at everything else. You know when you look at that guy, he can't lift shit. You know it and he can't lift shit. He can't do the big barbell exercises. You know he sucks at deadlifts. Probably at bench, not always, good chance. He better have some serious pecs. He's going to be good at bench with no upper back. You know he probably sucks at squats and he has a taco squat where he folds over when he gets heavy. And you know his strict press sucks. Because he can't follow through, right? He, he, he's, that's the guy who hits that sticking point right above his head when the weight gets remotely heavy and he can't follow through with it. We know that. You know that when you look at him. Size equals strength. You can tell where people are strong. So, we also know that that guy is predisposed to shoulder impingement, by the way. The other thing I point out, muscle imbalances cause, number one, mobility problems. Number two, predispose you to injury. That is a muscle imbalance. If you've got big lats and no upper back, that's an imbalance. It means you didn't balance your vertical and horizontal pulling. So let's talk about building an upper back. Because if you had to pick one versus the other, the upper back's more important from a strength and injury perspective. 
if you had to be biased in one direction. Now, in a perfect world, you'd be balanced. It's better to be balanced. But if you had to be biased, upper back is better. So what all am I doing here? I'm doing a bunch of snatch grip lifts. Why are we doing these? Upper back, rear delts, traps. You know, and I had someone ask me uh, in one of my vlogs, hey, why are you doing the snatch grip deadlifts instead of RDLs? Couldn't you, if you just want upper back? Because we're not doing any of this stuff for just upper back. Why would we be doing these big movements if we only cared about the upper back? I could just do these rows. But we want other things. The snatch grip deadlift makes you really good at pulling from the floor. Because it builds other muscles. It builds all the muscles of the deadlift, but it takes you to a deeper joint angle. Right, a snatch grip deficit, a snatch grip deadlift is a deep deficit deadlift. So you get the benefits of deficit pulling gives you power off the floor dead stop strength can't lift anywhere near as much weight so some muscles aren't going to get maybe as strong those joint angles it'll make you good for good at having power off the floor on the deadlift so the rdl doesn't do that all right place the rdl with my good mornings okay but look at what it does with the upper back. You have to use so much trap. Puts extra stress. Granted, it's isometric stress. It's a stretch. Stress on the rear delts, rhomboids. Okay. Helps build that whole upper back. It'll thicken you up. Thicken you up. While making you good at deadlifting. Right, this is an amazing supplemental lift for a conventional deadlift. Also an amazing supplemental lift for power cleans. Right, it's a good lift. It's just hard. It will beat you up if you're not careful. Now, the snatch grip high pull. This is the king of shoulder girdle development. If you want an exercise that will build a massive upper back and I haven't been doing these that long I'm seeing gains already but I can already tell when I get good at these it's going to be a massive difference throw out a name out there you all know Eric Bugenhagen what does he say that this is probably in his opinion one of the top lifts for building up your whole yoke has he not said that I think most people out there like the boogs most people know that the boogs knows what he's talking about right he's got the coaching background He's got the size. He's got the strength. I'm going to say he do knows a thing or two. Uh, and whether you like his personality or dislike it, it's largely irrelevant. The guy knows what he's talking about. He's a pretty smart guy when it comes to training. He knows what he's talking about. He's told you. You want the upper back and shoulder girdle? Because that's what it's about. You have to get the delts. Side and rear delts. This lift will do it. Brings a hell of a lot to the table. This lift brings a lot to the table for that. In fact, if you really wanted to focus on just one thing to bring up that area, snatch grip high pull. In addition to making you more explosive, it's a power movement. Get that hip extension that this exercise will make you powerful and finally snatch grip pin lay rows I've had that asked too why don't you just do the normal pin lay row when you get more overall development hmm. stimulus fatigue focus on the upper back and no I don't just do these randomly out of the blue I have tons of my lifters who have no upper back who I make do a large numbers of snatch grip they do tons of snatch grip pin lace. So have them do wide grip inverted rows. That's a good one too, depending on low back fatigue. Gets the job done. Does it very, very well. In, let's talk about a rear delt developer. Snatch grip rows. Strict snatch grip rows. It'll build your rear delts up. Obviously it builds the whole upper back. But again, if you really need to hammer the posterior deltoid, 
that'll do it. I'm not saying we can't do band work. I'm not saying band pull the parts and face pulls and stuff don't do that. In fact, band pull the parts done correctly are phenomenal rear delt exercise. But if we're trying to build everything. Again, with a nice big explosive movement. Slide grip rows. Snatch grip rows. And I don't like to call them pin lay rows because to me the pin lay row is a row. That is a classic row. We should call other types of rows bodybuilder rows and the pin lay row is just the row. It's the, it's the original version of the lift. There you have it guys. It's how we get a yoke. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.